So welcome everybody. It's so great to see you. Welcome to Simplify to Multiply. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about because I like to really build businesses that are not complicated, that are really in a space of, of creating the life that you want to have. It's, it's really starting to change things up. And I think that there's so much that we can do in our businesses that helps us simplify our businesses so that we can grow our business with more time and more dollars in our business. So welcome everyone. It's so great to see you joining us today. I'm Cami Gilner, if you don't know me. I am obsessed with helping women entrepreneurs build businesses with more time prosperity and wealth prosperity and to do it by simplifying and to, to slow down because none of us want to have crazy busy businesses we don't want we want to have we want to be able to live our lives in ways that really is meaningful to ourselves so i want you to just take a moment and imagine what does simplicity mean to you so really pause on that and i would love for you to jot down what does simplicity mean to you and as you think about that drop into the chat box what simplicity means to you so we've got Brenda from, from Bend, Oregon. We've got Lauren Fisher from Silverthorne. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got Amy Collette joining us from Denver. Welcome. Um, and I know there's more of you out there, so just keep dropping in where you're at, where you're at, but also share with what does simplicity mean to you? When you think about creating simplicity in your business and your, your life, what comes up for you? I see you drop in a few things into the chat box. got Carol from Stockbridge. We've got Katie and Emily from Philly. When I think about simplicity in my business, I am thinking about things that, that I can, that are repeatable, that I can do over and over again, that it's the ease, it's the flow, it's the automation. It's about removing the unnecessary. So great, Katie. That's really good. And as you're, you're moving through this, um, Rebecca is not stressing that I've forgotten something and she's from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, Dr. Sam is with us in, in Florida, Michelle from Brighton. And so when I think about simplicity, I'm really thinking about this space of, of creating that ease and flow. And I think, um, I think Jen said that earlier. Um, Sam said it, it's being at peace and ease, right? So this is getting to that. And there's ways that we can do this in our business, that we can set our business up for ease and grace and flow and fun and all these good things that you guys have been talking about. And the thing is, though, is what I see is I get to talk to so many women entrepreneurs all over the place, and I see them not living in, in, in these ways, in these simplicity, because they're putting a lot of, of things into their businesses, and they're making it more complicated than it needs to be. So what I also see is I see women entrepreneurs working harder than they ever have before. Um, they're desiring a scalable business but they're not really sure how to get there. They're carrying the weight of their business and thinking the only way to is just to keep working harder. And I can tell you that's not the answer is to just keep working harder. Um, it's they're trying all the things. They're not getting the results that they want. They, um, and this is a big one. I, I think this is a really big one. So many people are kind of piecemealing all the things that they're hearing. They're hearing about, you know, they're hearing all the marketing shiny stars of you need to do this, you need to do that. And they just start throwing all the, the, the kitchen soup in, or all the kitchen goods into the soup, right? And it gets really, it gets really messy. And it can, they're following the flavor of the month, the guru that they're hearing. And that's where things, you know, that it can get really messy that way. The other thing I see happening here is that they're undercharging and they're not generating the revenue that they desire. And that's a, a really big one where I, I think that um, I'm, I'm passionate about helping women entrepreneurs charge what they're worth so that they can really, um, really step into that space of, of having a profitable business that gives them the space and time, the, the time freedom and the time or in the, in the prosperity, the, the wealth prosperity to be able to do, live the life that they want to live. So um I'm seeing a lot of things here. Fewer tasks, great, Amy. Um, I have to do and track and feeling of, 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 of flow and fun. Simplicity is being at peace and ease. 
I may or may not be guilty of that whole complicating business thing, LOL. Um, totally have done it myself. And that's why I, I know these things because I've done these sorts of, I've done all of these things myself. Um, the other thing is I see that women entrepreneurs are really amazing at what they do. And yet they still are struggling to articulate their, their value and their voice. They're not getting the leads that they want. And marketing and sales gen and sales and lead generation can be challenging. And then the other thing I see happening is they are getting lost in the noise because there's so much noise. We hear so much noise out on the, you know, out on the internets. We, you know, we're, we're, we've got stuff coming at us all day long. And you go out there and you want to be seen and heard for what you're an expert at. And it's easy to get lost in it. Um, and, and you're not you get frustrated, your messaging isn't reaching enough people, you've tried all the marketing tactics and they haven't worked and you're just not getting the yeses that you'd like. And so this is what I see happening a lot. And I'm on a mission to change that. I'm definitely on a mission to, to change up how we're doing business. And I think the beautiful thing is that we as women entrepreneurs are really changing the future of business. And because we just are going to set the, we're going to just put a stake in the ground and say, we are not doing it in this way any longer. We're not going to do it the way that, you know, we grew up doing the business. We're changing it up and we're really creating businesses and lives that we love. And I think that's a really big, big goal. So the big goal is really to step into the energy of being a CEO and accelerate my growth with scale. So this came from Jill. She came to me a few years back and she said, you know, I just, I want to be a CEO. I want to figure out what my scalable offers are. I want to scale faster than I have been. And I really want to catapult my business to that next level and with more time and more dollars. And so this was something that Jill came to me with and we worked on this and I'll tell you, tell you more of her story as we move through this today, but that's where we're going, right? This is where we're trying to get to is creating this space of, of opening the door to a different type of business. And we have the power to change this up. And the beautiful part of that is that we do this by simplifying. We simplify our businesses. We, um, and I'm going to show you how you can do that for more time, prosperity, and wealth prosperity. So I worked with one of my clients several years back. Her name is Connie. And um, she doubled, her business doubled in growth into the multi-six figures. And I love this testimony because she, what's important about about is she said I she helped me take my business to that next level but she helped me reclaim ownership over my life and where I spend my time and energy and I think that was a really big thing when she started to take ownership of that she was able to launch her book she was able to do things that she was no longer trading hours for dollars and it really opened up how she was able to do this so um, definitely want to to um, share with you some of these tips today that have worked in my own business and have worked for my clients. So my goal today is, you know, I'm, I'm going to be teaching these the, the pillars of prosperity that help you, um, that help you take your business to that to that level with the more simplification. And so my goal is really to lift up every woman in this room with with the with knowledge, with ideas, with with tips and ways that you can simplify your business. And then my other goal is really to earn, I want to earn the right to continue to this journey with you into this this year and in, and beyond as your guide and your mentor. So I'll share with you on how we can do that later on as we move through this. But this is something that that um, I, I'm really passionate about is uplifting the women. In fact, I've got a, a mission statement that says that I've, I want to impact 1 million women around the world. And the way I do that is not just by by you know, reaching 1 million women, but it's about helping you guys do what you guys do. And it's like the ripple effect that we create together. So I think that's so, so good. And thank you, Rebecca, for that. I appreciate that. I love that too. Um, so how to simplify your business for more time and, and wealth prosperity. That's what we're going to go into. And there, I'm going to be talking about three pillars of prosperity today. The first one is vision. And vision is very much about the vision of the, the impact that you want to make with your, your business, the, the impact of, that you want to make on your life. So it's the right work-life balance. It's like creating the right type of business that you want to be running. And to do that, it means getting into the right business model. 
So it's the right business model that creates that life for you, that creates that impact that you want to make. So we'll be talking about that. Second, it's about voice. And voice is about what's the message and how you're attracting clients into your business and your ideal clients. You want to be attracting your ideal clients into your business. And then third is visibility. How are you getting visible? So these are what I call the, the soul and strategy pillars of prosperity. And I talk about soul push strategy because when I'm looking at growing businesses, I believe that it takes both. It takes the soul side, our soul wisdom, our wisdom that we know that we have you know, gathered as women throughout our lifetime. We get to bring that wisdom that we have, that soul wisdom we have, and then we get to apply strategies alongside of it. So I love to do introspective work. I love to do apply the strategies. Today, what I'm going to be sharing with you is mostly the strategy side of this, but definitely I love to work in the soul side of it because I think so often we can, you know, as we're as we're looking at marketing, as we're like, what are the things that we love to do? Um, that's where we want to pull from. We don't want to have to just follow all the all the rules that we hear, but really listen to our inner wisdom and our intuition. So that's an important part of this mix. So let's talk about vision. And vision, bear with me, is, is very much about developing a business model that's aligned to you. And when you think about, you know, there's all kinds of business models that are out there. And when you're aligning it to you, it's like really, what is, what is the work-life balance that you want to create for yourself? Do you want to work 30 hours a week? Do you want to work um, five days a week? Do you want to have a month off in the summertime? So really starting to think through what is it, what's the lifestyle that you want to create? So as you, as you think about this, you know, what are some of the ways that you, you know, that's important to you and start to build this from that perspective first before you start to build, um, before you're building it from, from, you know, the following some of the, the strategy that were there. So really tap into what kind of a business do you want to be creating for yourself? And what you do when you're building this vision um, is you're, you're simplifying your scalable business model to, to deliver more time and more dollars. So you're simplifying what you're delivering. One of the things that I have caught myself doing over the years, and I don't know if you guys have done this, just shout out, yes, if, if you have, but it's by adding in a whole bunch of products. It's like, oh, I'm, I like this product. I'm going to add in another product. I'm going to add in another product. Oh, I'd like to do this retreat. And so suddenly it becomes very complicated because I've added in a whole bunch of different products that don't necessarily inter interrelate to one another. So that's something that I think is is something to really look at is, is how, 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 and we're going to talk about how you do this here in just a moment. And designing that life and business you love is second. I've talked about that a little bit. It's like, what is it? What's that lifestyle that you want to create? Do you want to have Fridays off always so that you can go skiing? You know, what does that look like for you? Um, and then, or do you want to have time where you can go be with your kids at a specific, you know, like to be in their classroom with them? So there's, you get to design a, a life and business. One of my clients is actually designing her business to, to, so that she's working during her kids' nap times. And you know what? She's got 10 employees working for her and she's she's rocking and rolling with that. So it's it's she's designed what she wants that to be. And then you start to lead with impact and mission. What's that mission? What's that impact that you want to make? So when I made that that mission statement of I want to impact 1 million women, helping them grow their businesses and, and put their voice out into the world in bigger ways. That gets me doing things that I may not do otherwise if it was just one on one. If I was just like, you know, I'm just going to help that next one person. Um, it's like, no, I want to, I want to impact a million women. So how can I impact more people so that they can go do the work that they're they're meant to do in the world? So those are some of the ideas for you on that. So let's talk about how you simplify to scale. And I start with a smart business model and. This is what my business model looked like several years back. I had all these products. I, these were really fun products. I was having fun with them. But every single month, I was marketing something very different. And they weren't ever really interrelated. And yes, I got growth. I was able to grow my business by just continuing to add more and more and more into that, that, that bucket. And 
I also worked really hard. And at some point you come to a place where you, you, you can't scale because you're, you're just tapped out. So to, to scale, um, peer growth can feel really heavy and we can, it often happens very organically. There's um, sometimes more zeros than, and, and more headaches associated with, with growth. Um, there's more complexity for sure. And it sets, you can set goals and you can hustle to meet them. And I bet you all have been there. I certainly have been there. It's like, I can hustle. I don't like hustle. I'm pretty anti-hustle. So, but I've been there. I've been on that other side. And then oftentimes you're having one conversation at a time, servicing one client at a time. And I've definitely been there as well. So that's pure growth that you can take there. If you move to the scale side of this, this is very where you start to get really intentional about it. You're intentionally designing to leverage your time with the, the right team, the right mindset, and the right skill set. And it happens, it rarely happens organically. It happens with intention. It's like, okay, where am I taking my clients? Where am I meeting them? And so you start to build a product model where it's an ascending scalable model. So you're starting to say, okay, this is the entry point to my, my, to my work with me. My clients come into me. Here's the next level of work that they can do with me. Here's the next level. So you're building a very intentional model where people can come to work with you. And you get laser focused on your, your ideal client, what I call your soul client. Um, and, and what brings them to that decision moment. So this is where you start to, to, to develop more time prosperity and wealth prosperity when you are simplifying your business model instead of having too many products. So if you can relate to having too many products, um, drop into the chat box a, a yes. Because I know I have been there. I've, I've been there. But as soon as I started to simplify that really shifted this up. This that changed how, um, you know, how often that you know I was having to change up my marketing. Where now I I'm I'm very clear about what my, what I stand for, right? And the shift can really help you get there. So that's this is one of the ways that you you can change up how you're you're really doing this. So building a smart business model. I have I call it a smart business model, and I have an acronym for it. So. S is you simplify your products, right? You're simplifying who you serve. You're simplifying your, your products. M is your market, is really knowing your market and understanding your marketing so that it's, you're simplifying your marketing as well. So it's, you're, not, you're not throwing everything up on the wall. You're actually saying, okay, I'm going to market three ways this year. And this is what I'm going to put my focus in and I'm going to get really good at it. So you're simplifying in how you market and you're, you're simplifying in who you're marketing to. You've got this ascending product model so that it's a, it's a high value product model. And I want to make sure that I emphasize that. You're, you know, so it's a high value, you're sol solving a, a big problem for your customers. And so you, you have a, a high value offer that, that helps you build your, and we'll talk more about this as we get into this, but you're, you're really creating you know, the, the right, business model that helps you serve the right number of clients. It's repeatable, right? It's a repeatable process that you're, you're building from a marketing perspective. And that's how you get into time prosperity. So that's what the smart business model is, is simplified market, ascending, repeatable, and time prosperous. And a couple of things about there's, it takes courage to simplify. So when you've got a whole lot of different products, you don't just work your way out of overwhelm. You simplify out of overwhelm. And this helps you really start to, um, to you know, when you start to say, okay, I'm not going to do this product. It was really a fun product for me, but you know what? It's really not part of this bigger picture. You're, you're intentionally making these decisions and you start to create some more spaciousness in your business and you get out of that reaction mode and start to develop your big thought leadership plans and, or thought leadership ideas so when you have more spaciousness, more white space in your business, I often refer to white space in your business, it helps you like slow down, be present, make CEO decisions, think about what is it is from a messaging perspective that you're really bringing out to the world and how you want to be that leader in that space. And the simpler you make your business, the more profitable it will be to scale. 
And the simpler you make your business, the more clear and confident you and well directional you will be in attracting new clients into your business. So that's all about it takes courage to simplify, but you you simplify with intention. So you get really intentional about how you're doing it. This is Jill, and I, I mentioned Jill early on. She was the one that was really wanting to step into her her CEO, you know, mindset. And um, and so she had a full coaching practice when she came to me and she was ready to accelerate her growth with scale. This past year, she raised her rates. She launched her group program. She was doing all one-on-one -on -one prior to that. And so she launched her group program, raised her rates. And then as she did that, her business revenue went up significantly. And she took almost a month off to be fully present at her son's graduation last year. And I think that's really important because we're building businesses that let us live our lives that we want to live. So I love Jill's story and what she was able to do by applying these principles of vision, voice, and visibility. So let's talk next about voice. So that's the second pillar of prosperity. And for me, when I think about this is all about attracting more soul clients into your business and really starting to create, build this brand that's impossible to ignore and crazy to not buy from. So it's like this, people are like, oh my gosh, I really want to be a part of what it is that you offer. And what's cool about this is it can really double and triple the lifetime value of your clients because you're so in tune with what they're needing in their journey because you've been down that pathway, you've worked with clients along that pathway that you, you can start to see what their next need is. And you can start to really anticipate that. And you can step into this space of, of really serving at a deeper level, which is really fun to be able to do. And you can simplify when you really dig, dig deep into voice. You can start to simplify how you market with a content, content strategy that attracts your soul clients. So this is one where you're really starting to, to get into the, the space of, your, your marketing, your messaging. And I have a soul client attraction message matrix that we're going to talk about. I've been doing marketing for a long time. Um, I've been doing marketing for, oh gosh, I don't even want to count how many years, but it's more than 30. So it's a long time. And marketing has shifted and changed. And it's, it's you know, I my degree is in marketing. I have my corporate world was in marketing. I've been marketing for my in my business and my clients' businesses for a lot of years. And what I know is marketing has shifted. It's changed. And if we're doing marketing the way we did marketing even two years ago, it's shifted and it's changed. And, and part of what it is, is there's so much noise that's out there. It's for us to be able to stand out amongst, in the, in, amongst all the noise that's out there. It's really finding to, to be able to speak to our clients, um, our, our clients' love language. So I have a, a, a soul client attraction message, message matrix. And we start with building your brand from the inside out. And this means that you're building a brand that no one else can own but you because you are unique. So we're really getting into this space of who are you? What's the essence of you? What's the brand of you? And this really starts to help you differentiate yourself from all the noise that's out there. Second, we get into the customer journey where we're we're learning to speak our clients' love language. We know what they're desiring. We know what their challenges are. We're able to really speak to them. And I'm big on speaking to our clients' desires and not their pains. I mean, we, we have to understand their pains and their challenges. But I want my marketing message to uplift my clients and to help them see more possibilities. And so that's a big shift. That's a rule in marketing that I like to break all the time. Is, is to really change up. We're, it's not going to be like we're rubbing the salt in the wounds, but we're actually helping our clients see bigger possibilities. And we're, we're tapped into that, what they really want. And then the third part of this is getting into your one message for the world, which is getting into the thought leadership level of messaging. And what's cool about that is, is that we're getting into messaging that is, is, um, unique and different that no one else is owning. It's like you're putting a stake in the ground for what you stand for. And I'll talk a little bit about what that is. So that's the, as we are developing voice with my clients, we're really building these three components um, to really serve my clients, to help them serve their clients in a way and, and attract their soul clients into their business.
So let's look at brand from the inside out. So I always say that we fall in love with souls and not faces. And we're all on this soulful journey. And when we get in alignment with who we are and what we're meant to be doing, our soul work, the universe just gets all in behind us. And that's really powerful. That's where we, we, we start to find more flow and more ease because we're doing the work that we're meant to do. And to get there, we have to listen to our inner wisdom. The way we attract more clients into our business is to be ourselves and to connect with people heart to heart and soul to soul. So if we start to connect and, and work with our with our clients and our, our prospects in ways that this is a soul that I'm connecting with and they're on a journey that I'm helping them with. So that's what you're looking for is you're really helping people step into the spaces like that. And then our soul work is as important as our strategy in our business. So this is where I talk about your soul plus strategy, right? And I, I, I truly believe that our soul work is is the magic in our work that helps us differentiate who we are. And when we are building our brand from the inside out, so we take our strengths and our passions and our values and we get into the essence of who we are, and then we start to build the essence of our, of our brand, we build a brand that is built from the inside out and we stand out from the noise. And because no one can be just like you, it takes you, takes you out of all the noise and when you build from a brand from the inside out, there's no such thing as competition. It was actually, I think I did a post about this this morning. Um, it's not about the competition. When we get into, we can collaborate with others and that's much more fun than being in competition. And you're going to naturally attract your soul clients because they're going to feel who you are. They're going to be drawn to you, the essence of you. And it keeps you from falling into the trap of sounding just like everyone else. If you start just following all the the, the um, formulas that are, that are out there. And, you know, I, I actually love AI. I think AI is a really useful tool, um, but you've got to be bringing you to it. Otherwise you sound just like everyone else. And so it helps you build this inner system of trust and trust in yourself because you're truly just being you. And um, it's then an, an ability for others to trust you as well. So this is the power of really starting to stand out from the noise by building your brand from the inside out. So that's the first part of what's. Then we get into your customer journey where we speak your client's love language. And this is um, where we are, are truly getting into um, simplifying our, our, our soul client attraction, right? And I like to do this by understanding your customer's journey. And we, what is the story that your ideal clients are in right now? So I want you to think about your ideal client. Pick somebody that you know and bring them to mind. Somebody that you'd either like to be working with or somebody you can, you're can you already working with now. What's the story that's going through their mind right now over and over? What's keeping them awake at night, right? And this is how you start getting into the minds and hearts and souls of your clients is and we, we understand their, their biggest desires. Um, we understand um, what's in their hearts. Um, we understand the emotions that are keeping that might, might have them feeling stuck. Um, one question I love to ask when we're looking at customer journey is, do they have false beliefs that's kind of keeping them in a, a place, that's keeping them stuck in a place? Like that person can do it, but I can't do it, right? Or how are they struggling? How can you help them through this place? This is this, this journey that you're going. And so from that, you start to build your offerings to serve this journey. So because you know, you've, you've talked to people, you've heard the language that they use, and you start to build offerings to serve this journey. Perhaps you've been on that journey yourself. So you remember what you went through when you went there. So it's like, what did I need to get through that? And then you start to build your marketing and your content to serve this journey. And this is where you can get into, it really simplifies how you're, you're, once you've done this initial work, yes, there's a base of work that you have to do to get there. But once you've done it, your marketing flows much more easily because it's, you're so intimately connected to it and you build your sales conversations to serve this journey. So you really start with their story and the desired transformation. And that's how you get to the yes to you. So this is, you're, you're helping them see bigger possibilities in themselves and they can see for, um, helping them see bigger possibilities for themselves 
then they see it by themselves, right? So this is your ability to help them see, in a, see it in a bigger way. And when you do this, you're, you're helping your clients get journey to you to a yes. You're helping them, um, you're aspiring them, you're speaking your client's love, lang love language. You're positioning yourself as the one because you've built no love and trust with them. You've positioned yourself as a, a thought leader um, with that, that one message for the world that we're going to talk about here in just a moment. Um, but you're, you're helping them see themselves in your stories, in your journey. And when I'm, one thing I'm not talking about here is how important story is to this, this, um, this voice of you. Because your stories are what really helps make you relatable and helps people tap into you. So that's what we're building into this, this world of voice and, and speaking your client's love language. And you're solving their most expensive problem because you've dug into it, understanding what that is. And that's really an important part of that because that's what creates urgency. That's what creates an urgency to say yes to you. So this is um, another one of my clients, Kathleen June. And Kathleen um, had this, with, with the deeper insight into my ideal clients, I've tailored my offerings more precisely. This has allowed me to set higher rates and enjoy a surge of repeat customers, ultimately tripling her in income. Because she was so tuned into, and, and so Kathleen helps people um, create online courses. And she was so tuned into what her ideal clients were needing, she was able to continue to, to ex extend what she was offering building that, that scalable offer, right? And it really helped them, her clients go in deeper with her. And that's really what the beauty of this is. So with that, let me just check here. Um, yeah, so Amy said, story is how humans connect. I love that. Um, and it is how humans connect. So the more we bring story into the voice of who we are, that's really where people start to say, oh, I can see myself in their story. And that's a, a, a really an, an important part of a voice. Okay, so now let's talk about visibility because this is the third pillar. So we've talked about vision, we've talked about voice. Now we're gonna talk about visible, visibility. And this is when you start to walk in your light as a leader, right? You're owning the strength of who you are, this light of who you are. And this is what really lights me up because I love to see my clients really finding their, their, their flow with their message and getting visible. And it's, they're moving from attracting one client at a time to hundreds. They become known as a go-to leader in their space. And this is a big part of visibility is, you know, once you're, when you're building your, your messaging, your voice, it's language that is becoming real to your clients. But once you start to get visible with your, your messaging, you start to ignite and embody the fire in you. And this is, this is important because visibility is the fire in your growth. So you can have all these pieces in place, but as soon as you start to put the visibility into place, this is where the growth really comes for you. And there's so many ways that you can get visible, right? You can be doing live streams. You can be doing web webinars, just like I'm doing here. You can be writing a book. You know, I know Amy's, Amy's um, from the book world. Um, we've got, you can be doing podcasts. I love podcasting. I've been, you know, I'm hitting seven, seven years of podcasting this month. Um, so that's really a, a fun place for me to, to podcast stages. I love stages. So all of these are ways that you can get, you can get visible. And this is how, but this is the fire into when, that, that you bring into your marketing. So when you start to think about your, your soul client attraction message matrix, this is where we go. So we start with the brand from the inside out. We go to the customer journey. Now let's talk about the last component of this is, is, is your message for the world. And this is where you're starting to build a, a message that gets people to stop and think and act differently. It's, it's a message that you're putting a stake in the ground and really saying, this is what I stand for. And it's positioning you as somebody that really knows what they're talking about in your field. So it's really important. So here's one um, message that I love to share. It's this Dana Kirchmar, she's one of my clients. And she's, her one message for the world is, what if we stopped asking girls if they're good at math and, and instead started asking what problems they would love to solve? So she works, she's, she's literally a rocket scientist. She works in the world 
love aerospace and, and um, aviation. And so she's working with young women and helping them succeed. She's on a mission to change that right currently there's less than 3% of women in the aerospace industry who are in leadership roles. She's on a mission to change that. So really, I love that. Another message is another one of my clients. Um, um, when women invest in companies, they believe in our world will change. And this is Shelly Shell, And she's actually refining this to talk about when women pay attention to what they're buying, our world is going to change. If we start you know, paying attention to what is happening, you know, what we're putting into our cupboards, um, what products, what brands we buy from, it's, it's a really important way that we can, we can change the world with our buying power. So um, that's another really good example of that. So visibility is the fire in our growth. And here's our female advantage, guys. This is, this is what's really super fun about, if you think about putting your message out into the world so often, and I, I, I can be one of the very first ones, when I started speaking and started putting my message out into the world, I had all these little messages up here in my head that would be telling me, who are you to talk about this? And, you know, I had fears showing up. So I had all kinds of limiting, limiting beliefs around that. And I started to work with that. I was like, if I want to hit a million women, I have to get over this side of me. I have to get over myself and start to um, find ways that I can bring my message out into the world. So I had to start working with doing the inner work to t start to shed some of those limiting beliefs that I had. And as I started to find some confidence in, as I started finding confidence in what I was sharing with the world, and I found kind of strength and power in getting my voice out and putting my voice out into the world. I still was in this place of projecting. And I think you probably have all seen people on a stage that are just there and they are, they are projecting their message. Um, it's good. And it's, it, it can, you know, it can still land. It can still really help people um, find, help people, you know, hear their message, but sometimes it can land a little bit hollow. And so this is our beauty as a, our, our female advantage that we have is when we start to embody our message, embody our leadership, we become this beacon of light. We start adding this light of who we are. We have, it's like embodying our message and walking in our light. That's when we become a movement. That's where we really start to step in, into this fullness of what we can do in the world. And this is some of my favorite work I like to do in the world of visibility because it helps us start to, to just, just let our light shine. And in, I don't know, my book that, that I wrote many years ago, it was called Fire, it's called Fire Dancer. And so there's something still about bringing this light of who we are, doing the inner work of um, building our brands from the inside out, knowing who we are, knowing how we want to make a difference, knowing the, the impact that we want to create. All of this, bringing this forward, we can become movements in the work that we do. And it's really, really powerful. So don't take, don't, take this lightly that we have this superpower as, as women that we can really embody. And it's what, one of the things I love to help my clients do is, is find ways to embody their message. We do soul speaks from the stage. We, we have all these ways. I do equine vision journey retreats where we're like really dropping into the soul of who we are. And so all of this work, it's the soulful work that makes us, um, helps us become that movement. So this is another one of my clients, Shelly Johnson. And she is a recruiter. And as she she did such a wonderful job of getting visible. And she says, I'm not playing, I'm I am playing bigger. I'm not only as my revenue has grown by let me say this over again. I am playing bigger, and not only has my revenue grown by 220%, I have been selected as a Forbes.jobs exclusive recruiter for the state of Colorado. So that was such an amazing acknowledgement that she got because she was going out, she was showing up as a leader in her space and she got acknowledged for that. So really powerful to see how that happens and, and the, the revenue growth comes behind it. And I can go back over the years, my clients that have grown their business the most have been the ones that have gotten the most visible. So it's an intricate part of it and getting visible is important but you need to make sure that you have the right messaging in place, the right, you've done all the work that's um, on the vision side of the packaging, the pricing is in place, the messaging is in place that, that really lands for your ideal clients, and then to get visible. 
I've seen people do visibility first before they have the other pieces and it goes nowhere because what happens is they don't have a place to put their people. So it's really important to you know, start with the vision, start with the voice and then bring in the visibility, but then bring in the visibility gig. And that's where that can really help you shine. So that is that. Let's check here. Oh, good. I see. Um, I'm seeing all good. Let me just go back through here because this is good stuff here. Um, Sylvia, um, I wish you had to go somewhere. Okay, Sam, you love every syllable of Dana's message. Me too. It's and that's such a good one. It's such a great example of a one message for the world that that because it's it's really she wants to change that conversation. Um, Rebecca, lots of limiting beliefs to overcome. I'm not sure I'm worthy of feeling. Oh God, I've so had those. I so have had those, and I still get those. So it's that's why another thing I think community is so good for us because we can you know we can express these. We can be in community. Um, oh Sam, I'm I'm so glad you're reading Fire Dancer. That's awesome. That's so awesome. And Rakshana, intentional, strategic, and okay, no worries. Perfect. Okay, so let's keep going. So we've got we've talked about um, we've talked about vision, we've talked about voice, we've talked about visibility, and each strategy on its own is is really powerful, right? It, it's a very powerful. Each strategy can really do things, but the magic really happens when you start to combine all three. And this is what it looks like. So when you you know, when you're working with vision, then you move into voice and then you move into, uh, let me go over here so I can, you can see this. You're working with vision, um, you move into voice, you move into visibility. It's a cycle, right? It's a spiral journey of your business. And your business is going to go through this in multiple ways. I mean, you're going to go through this, like as you're reaching $100,000, you've gone through a version of this and then as your business goes up, you've gone through another version of it because our businesses are always evolving and growing. Right? There's always this shift and change that we're making for each level of our business. And this is why these principles will carry you deep into your business. They are ones that no matter where you're at, it's going to help you go to that next level. I work with clients in this, you know, that are in this upper six figure range. And we're still working with some of these same principles, but we're refining them. We're getting them to a different space. I'm working with clients who have just started their business. And we're refining and we're working this. But these principles, these pillars are going to be really intricate for you. So there's your, your pillars, vision, voice, and visibility. And there's one more thing that you need to have. And this is, these are really intricate parts of this. But the, the, the next thing that you need to have is your R factor. And this is how you resonate. Um, and this is because our this is um, how we resonate really matters. When I see people being feeling frustrated that their messages aren't getting enough people or they've tried all the marketing tactics that haven't worked or they're not as getting as many yeses as you'd like, this is often one of those places that we can go in, we can work with that, that helps tweak how we resonate. It's this light of us, right? It's we're taking care of our, our energetic state of being, that how we're showing up in the world. So your R factor has multiple components to it. So one is mindset, right? So mindset can be very much about um, how, you know, it's like all the things that, you know, we were talking about the limiting beliefs that we have. So really learning how to work with limiting beliefs or fears or whatever that looks like. And every single day is going to be different, right? And you're going to just mindset work is going to be an intricate part of what we do as entrepreneurs. I think it's really important work. And that's one of the things that we have to work on to really to, to tap into this R factor and how we're turning that dial up on our R factor. The next part is body. And that means taking care of this vessel that serves us. It means the right, the right nutrition. It means the right uh, movement. It's about the, our energetic bodies. It's about how we take care of this vessel that is serving in, serving in our work. It's really, really important. And then spirit and i always say spirit however you spirit you know whatever spirit looks like for you but spirit when we tap into that inner wisdom that we have we start to we can we can be guided we can make decisions in different ways we can um we can really open up our world to being in alignment with how we're meant to be showing up in this world um it's like we've been through this big journey of life getting to this place of where we are right now 
And now we get to go through this next evolution of who we are and we can, we can tune into our inner wisdom to help us get there. So these are three factors of, or three elements of our factor. And then a really important one is community because community is going to help us through all of these, right? Community is going to uplift us and help us shine our brightest light. And I, I can tell you that community has been my, one of my biggest strategies for my own business and being in community has been just an intricate part of how we can really, um, how I have succeeded in my work because I have, I can always tune to tune into other people around me and lean into other people around me. And it's, it's, it's really, really powerful. So this gets right back into our, our factors, our female advantage, right? This is when we turn up how we resonate, that dial of how we resonate, we become that movement. That's our superpower. So embodied fire, this is that, you know, we talked about this fire, visibility is our fire, but embodied fire is, um, is the, in the entrepreneur journey, entrepreneurial journey, these moments of doubt and uncertainty are inevitable. And to get through these challenges, it's essential to ignite and sustain, sustain your inner fire, right? This is where we get it with the right tools, the support of community, and an unwavering guidance. You can harness the embodied fire and transform stuff that's showing up in your way. Embody courage, you will be venturing into realms beyond comfort zone as an entrepreneur, right? It's like it's we're stepping into courageous moments every single day. And that's the beauty of this. And it means amplifying our unique voice. It means boldly stepping forward. It means ensuring your message resonates powerfully and in every new space that you explore. So that's the embodied courage. And then embodied action means it's not just about making plans, but it's about really embodying the goals that you have. It's about making them part of who you are. And with an embodied action, you really shape that destiny of what you're creating. And you're, you're stepping forward with purpose and intent. So this is what community really brings to you is that you've got the support in, in different types. It, it really supports you through this, this journey that you're on. So there we go. We've got vision, we've got voice, we've got visibility. These are the pillars of prosperity. And then you add in our factor. And often times it's only just a small tweak, right? It's often times just a small tweak that you're, you're, you're wanting, we can look at these different components. We can look at vision. We can look at voice. We can look at visibility. Where is that tweak that needs to happen? And I'm really good at being able to see okay, if you shift your, your message up here, or if you change your pricing up, there's ways that, you know, I can look at this across the board and say, here's some ways that you can really change up your business. And this is how we, we start to step into, the, we, we apply these pillars in a way that is simplifying your business. And what I've seen is I, I see too many people, they, they run, they struggle with this, this point where they, they, they have this raise in, in income and revenue, and then they just level out, right? And I definitely hit this in my business early on in my business where it was like, you know, I, I hit that six figure mark and then I just leveled out for the longest time. And it was like, okay, what's going on here? What needs to shift? And so I had to really figure out what was it. And what I've learned over the years is by changing up and tweaking these pillars, that's how you can really start to, to change this up. So you get into this raise up effect. And this is what's really cool about the raise up. If you just if you look at you know a business that's growing, and then you just start growing that business just thirty percent per year, you're not you're not like doubling, tripling, you're you're not breaking your back trying to get there, but you're just you're doing these these this incremental growth stages, and I want you to consider the lifetime value of these kind of revenue growths. I can tell you that when I look at my business, where when I started applying these principles and seeing you know year on year growth. The uplift effect in my business is over a million dollars by being able to, 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 to track this like that. It's like by putting this kind of um, focus on an intention towards these three pillars, that's where I, you can really shift this up. So the vision creates a scale. It, the vision is really to create a scalable business that gives you more time, money, and impact. 
So that's what we're wanting to create. And I want to break this down with some examples of this. When we start looking at, and I'm big on charging what you're worth, charging what the value of your services are. So let's just break this down. I want you to, um, to figure out how much you want to generate from your high value offer this year. So pick your highest value offer that you've got. And I'm going to give you an example here. So um, in this example, let's, let's generate $100,000 per year from my high value offer. Um, so it's my highest, it's, it's the part, you know, if you think about that scalable business model, it's like, what's the highest value offer that I've got? And figure out how many of these high value offers you need to sell to make that amount. So in this example, let's just do the math on this. Um, we're going to say this person has a $5,000 offer. They need 20 sales per year to hit $100,000. So that's just a great, great example. It's, that's just, you know, how many um, of those do they need to do per month? 20 sales per year, two sales per month. That's really doable, right? That's a really doable goal to set for, just to set for. So figure out how, let's make that happen. Let's figure out how many, how many you want to secure your first five sales using the vision, the voice, and the visibility. So just, you know, think through those numbers for yourself. How do you want to break this down? You know, write that number. Do I start with the number that you want? What's your high value offer? And then how many of those um, do you need to sell? Let's do another example of this because I think these are these are useful examples. Figure out how much you want to generate from your high value offer this year. Let's say we want to generate $300,000 from your high value offer. How many high ticket offers you need, do you need to sell? So this person has a $15,000 offer. So guess what? They have a 15,000. The last person just had a $5,000 offer. Same number of sales, right? There's 20 sales here to do, to hit $300,000. So we're starting to see how you can scale this, right? So you're starting to get into the math to do this. It's like same number of um, sales, same amount. And I can tell you, Selling a $15,000 offer take, it takes the same amount of um, effort as selling a $5,000 offer. Um, 20 sales, that you just went from $100,000 to $300,000. So where you need to make sure you're, what, what, what you need to make sure you're doing is you're delivering high value, solving that, that most expensive problem that your clients have and in, in, in designing this. So this is just another example of this, right? And again, we just talked about two sales per month, and this is creating more time prosperity and more wealth prosperity. You simplified how much you're selling and, and really changed what that bottom line is. And that's an, an intricate part of this. Um, so vision, voice, and visibility, the R factor. And you've got the, the soul, these are the soul plus, strategy, soul plus strategy pillars of prosperity. And every journey is different for every entrepreneur. So every single one of you on here has a different type of business. You now, my business is different than yours. Every single one of my clients' businesses is different. And what I love to do is like my clients are unique and, and you are unique. And this is your superpower, right? Is that you're unique. And I love to really help my clients look at these pillars and say, okay, what are the things that need to shift? And then we design a business growth path that aligns with the gifts of who you are, your biggest desires, what's that business look like that you want to create because nobody wants to create the same exact business and ensuring a more fulfilling and effective path to growth. So I have the proven tools and frameworks. I have a powerful community to support you and you are unique. So every journey is unique. And this is, I do this. I love to do this customized approach to my, my coaching work. It's not the same for every single person because every person is different. So just to recap what we've, we've talked about so far, you learned how to build a simplified business model that's going to generate more time and more wealth prosperity, right? So we looked at the business models. We played with some of the pricing. We looked at how you can create that scalable ascending business model. And so, you know, start to look at how do you do that? So it's like, these are pieces that, that we've talked about today. 
you've learned that speaking your client's love language will attract more so clients into your business. So really getting into that customer journey. What is it that, what are the stories they're talking about today in their head that you really help meet? Um, how do you build that whole, you know, voice of you um, from building their brand from the inside out to speaking your client's love language to the, um, the one message for the world, your thought leadership message. So that really becomes a, a, a true space for you to be able to bring your message out into the world. And then you learn that visibility is that fire in your growth. That's where you really start to embody who you are. So, and, and bring that message, embody your message so that people feel and are drawn to your work. So those are the three pieces that we've talked about today. And it's when you have, when you combine the vision, the voice and the visibility with community, this is where you really start to, to shift up how you're, you're growing a business with more simplicity. And you don't need to have like four different programs and try to put all these pieces together. Um, in fact, you may have tried that and it didn't work. So what I like to do is really have these pieces together and work with my clients, knowing that we can shift these, these pieces together. And I don't want you to have to waste your time figuring it out on your own. Um, because so often, you know, I've done this enough that I can often see this is a critical point that needs to shift. And, and I can help you with that, that dialing that. Um, I've been helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses for years. So I would like to to invite you to learn more about the Soul Push Strategy Mastermind. I am going to be doing, um, um, and this is not the right link here. I need to put the right link in here for you. Um, I have um, I have opened up some time on my calendar tomorrow um, where you can have an audit, a prosperity audit, and where we're going to dive into these three pillars and what are the parts that you need to shift. So let me talk to you a little bit about the Soul Push Strategy Mastermind. It's really, I get to intimately know you and your business. And in our journey together, I'm not just applying the latest hot thing. I actually bring real business strategy, build, bring real business strategy that's aligned to who you are. So if, if, you, know, if you really are best with writing, let's build your, your marketing around writing. If you're best with giving voice out loud and being on a stage, let's do it in that way. Um, so I like to work with you so that it's really aligned to you. And your inner wisdom is part of the, the team. And together we tailor your pathway to growth. Um, and it's growth defined by your desires. And it's life defined by your desires. We get into visionary business modeling. You get to develop a clear, scalable business model that not only aligns with your personal values and goals, but also drives sustainable profitability and growth. So it's really about getting that time prosperity and wealth prosperity. It's about amplifying your voice and your visibility and really elevating your, your brand and your message in the, and to your ideal clients, articulating your vision more powerfully so that you connect with your soul clients and becoming known as the go-to leader in, in your space. And it's about strategic marketing insights. It's about gaining access to tailored marketing strategies that simplify how you do, how you attract your soul clients into your business and, and how do you increase your revenue. I would like to invite you to join our community of thought partners for your growth. We meet three times a month um, with me as your guide and we've got focus support on your business. You choose which program is right for you. We've got three different programs, whether you're one, if, whether you're striving to hit that first six figures or whether you've crossed that threshold and really ready to go to that next level, I've got tools for you to really help you with that. And you become part of an intimate community of, of impact-focused women entrepreneurs um, who are supporting one another, who are collaborating, who are you know cheering each other on, who are you know uplifting each other's posts and and you know helping each other grow in, in great ways. So the community that forms in my platform is really amazing. So have me as your guide and mentor. I would love to, to do that. If you want to explore that, each pillar that we teach, if you want to explore that, um, I've got these, um, I've got the, Jessica can drop in here, the, um, the link. She's got it in here already, the prosperity audit. And um, each pillar we teach is really worth the entire investment and more. It's really, it's great. So I'll give you a couple of examples here. 
This was Cynthia Farrell. She grew her business by over 100,000 working with me. In our first one-on-one -on -one meeting, I told her we're not charging enough on a proposal that she was putting together. And she put that, we, we shifted what she was charging into a higher rate. And she covered the investment into my one-year VIP, VIP coaching and mastermind program. And it continues to pay dividends in the work that she's done. But that one little tweak that we did um, really covered the whole cost of her investment in me and has taken our business into multi-six figures. Um, another one is Nicole Trick Steinbach. And not only did I move into the world as a more powerful and positive force, so she really owned her voice. She was one of those ones that got so visible during COVID of all things. She, she surpassed her six figures in revenue in her first year of business. Um, I broke through from, from an external defined persona and stepped into my internal authentic me for my business. My business needed to be sustainable and um, rewarding. And I built this with more help with and more helping women in tech around the globe step into their brave. So um, another way that, you know, another client that has just such a great story here. So it, if it's it's your time, if you want to talk about this, and if you just want some, pro, if you want to have a prosperity audit on your business, I am happy to do this. This is um, this is really fun for me. This is a fifteen minute conversation that we will in this audit. We will will look at these three pillars. We'll say you know what are ways that you can tweak that. If it feels like something that you want to go further and know more, then we can we can set up some additional time where we can talk about what this mastermind looks like um, and what my communities look like. But um, take advantage of this prosperity audit. It's, it's, it's a great way. Um, I think there was one opportunity to do it this afternoon at two o'clock. I can tell you that I had to leave my home because my internet went out today. So I am not at home. So whether my internet will be back up at two o'clock for the one session that I did have um, Mountain Time um, this afternoon, you might, you might just have better luck tomorrow. Well, if you want, if you need to do it this afternoon, just drop me a note and know that I have to, we'll have to see if my internet has gotten back up at home. So um, that's the the link to that, um, the prosperity audit, the Bitly prosperity audit. Um, I would love to have you join the mastermind program. Um, let's have a conversation. You were born to create impact. Your message matters. So this is a value that I think is really important. You were born to create impact. Your message matters. Your soul work is as important as your strategy work. Value number two. Value number three is changing how business is done with time, prosperity, and wealth prosperity. We are leading this change, guys. This is exciting how we're leading this change. Um, your business is ready and you are ready. It's your time. It's truly your time. So join us. Get, grab one of those audits. Um, I'm doing these kinds of trainings every single month. Next month, we've got an April roundtable. Um, we're going to be talking about authentic marketing in a digital age. So uh, we're going to start to move into more marketing conversations in the next couple of months. Um, but I'm going to start off with this powerful roundtable with these wildly wise women in the world of marketing. Um, I'm really looking forward to this conversation next month. Um, you've got that link as well. And so with that, I want to say thank you for joining us today. I really um, appreciate you and um, grab one of those, those audits. I would love to, um, I would love to dive into your business and see what tweaks we can make into your business. Hope you're having a great day and um, we'll see you all later. Bye.